Today's update is entitled, Do As I Say, Not As I Do. Um, when you're doing science, you want to be accurate, you want to be careful, you want to be able to repeat things, you want to be able to understand why something is working the way it's working. One of the crucial ways that helps you do that is to change one thing at a time. Just one little thing, you, you have a, a condition, sometimes you repeat it just so you can make sure that you can repeat everything that went into that condition, and then you change one thing at a time. And as you change one thing at a time, then you have a new result, and you can know whether or not that variable has affected the result. That's not what I did. <laughs> uh, as you know, if you've been following, and then I, I had uh, uh, made some mixtures in this uh, style mug that um, broke the mug because it worked, but I also had some uh, some, uh, no, another whole set of mixtures that was for a shorter timing period where the mug didn't break, but uh, I didn't know exactly how long it had been timed for, and it didn't look like it was even completely baked and things like that. Well, I decided what the heck, I'm going to go on ahead and put it into a, a battery and see how that works, uh, just for the giggles of it. But did I do it where I could repeat it and I could look at how it varied from the first one completely? Well, no. The first time, I had taken the powder and I rinsed out the salt that was used to enhance the microwave activity. Um, did that by putting it into a coffee pot, a coffee maker, and pouring in 12 cups of uh, distilled water and then cutting, uh, then letting that go through the, the filter and drying the resulting powder and making that into the battery. Fine way to do it. And then I put it in an open air, uh, just a, a, a mix, uh, set of things and uh, pushed it together and, and started testing it. I got my first good results. So that was really cool. So I wanted to see how this, how this powder would work and unfortunately, I changed a couple other things at the same time, so I'm not certain. Uh, the other things I changed at the same time is I skipped the rinse phase uh, to get the salt out of the carbon mixture. Uh, earlier tests I had done, when my batteries weren't working so well, that's the key, uh, seemed to say that it didn't matter whether you rinse the salt out, that if anything, it helped. So I left the salt in. It also saved me that time of the salt of the uh, filter and dry step. And then I also made a uh, clumsy package for the beast. I, I took some of this tape, big hunkin' tape, uh, took some of this tape and I packaged it so that it wouldn't dry out. So I changed the time. I don't know exactly how much, oops, I changed the packaging, probably, that probably didn't affect much, and I changed whether or not the salt was mixed. So now I have more things to go back and test and find out. What happened is I ended up with a battery, there it is, ugly looking battery. Um, if you look close you can see that there was some leakage of the material from the inside, uh, but not much, and it's still wet, it's still working today, and this was a couple days ago. Um, and so the good battery I had, the run, the, my best run was 9 minutes, 17 seconds. This guy, uh, my first run was 3 minutes, 16 seconds. Second run was right about 4 minutes, 3 minutes, 58 seconds. Um, the th let it rest overnight or sit overnight. And that run after that was 4 minutes and 1 second. Then it sat for a whole weekend. After the weekend, I tried uh, a one-minute charge, which I hadn't tried. Up until now, I've been using a five-minute charge. But it looks like almost all the current is done during that first minute. And sure enough, I got a two-minute and 54-second run. So I actually got a run that was about three times longer than the charging time, which was kind of exciting and fun. And then the last one, I, I did one more five-minute charge, and I got a four minutes, 13 seconds off of this guy. So this guy, is, it's holding up. It's consistent, so it probably is keeping most of the electrolyte inside the battery, which is good. But this thing was a pain to work with. It was horrible. 
because it is so thin. And so it was hard to cut. It was hard to use. It was hard to uh, deal with. And I don't want to deal with that. So I have come up with a new method for packaging. And I'm going to try that. And I'm going to build one right now in front of you. And we'll see how it works. But let me reiterate one last, one more time. Do as I say, not as I do. When you're doing good, rigorous science, change one thing at a time. Don't change three things at a time because now I'm not sure how much was the difference because of the salt, how much was the difference because of the timing, was there any difference due to the packaging? Don't know. I'll be investigating and finding out. So let's build a battery using my new, new method. Uh, it, now this is an example battery. I haven't actually done this method before. I want to see if it's going to be possible to put it together. And paper is cheaper than graph oil, and I don't have any more of the uh, any more of the um, powder to use. I'm going to have to make a fresh batch. So I've I've take, taken some paper paper. I put some uh, of the tape on one side, and just colored in the other side to represent. Here would be where my carbon would be. Here would be the, just the graph oil. This piece of paper represents the separator between the two. So let's see how this will work. And I'm thinking it's going to work out pretty good, but I haven't built it yet. So these are these strips are uh, the, the tape is 48 millimeters wide. I don't know why that exact number, but it is. And these strips are 100 millimeters long. This is just a little bit bigger to make sure that it keeps everything from shorting out. This is 54 uh, by 54 millimeters. And my 3D printed stiffening plates are 50 by 50. So 50 by 50 is just a little bit bigger than the 48 by 48 active area. And so it should, it's not so much bigger that I can't get a good, good clamp, but I should be able to get a good clamp, make sure it's all the way out to the edges, even if I'm off by a millimeter or so. And uh, so hopefully this should all work. So what I'll do is I'll start by taking a uh, about a hundred millimeter or four inch strip of tape. That's a little long actually. Okay, and I'll put that down there. Now this would be the active area again, and the tape is on the back. So I'm going to put this right up on it, like that. Okay, that seemed to work just fine. No big surprise there. Now this guy, I'm going to center on the tape and center on that. So it should cover everything. You can see it's just a little bit bigger than everything. Okay, so that's where the... That's where the separator would go. This guy I'm going to put lay down on top of that. And this is I just lay it in because there is no other sticky part of the tape to do, but I'm, I'm doing it. What would be the active side down? This is looking good. I've got good coverage here. Now if I take another piece of tape, I should be able to lay it right over the first one. There we go. So now I've got good sealing probably along this edge. That should be good, but th these edges don't have good sealing. But if I take two more sets of tape and I go like there, halfway in, Do the same with this one, but I go halfway in. I'm noticing that this is sealed, and so the fact that if that, there's a little gap there, that's fine. This should make a good seal here. Should be able to turn it over and finish that seal with another half piece of tape, like that. This tape is cheap, readily available. I can buy it in all sorts of sizes, even down at the dollar store. So that works out really well for me, working with the kids. 
And there we go. There we go. Okay, so at this point, I would have, I think, a fairly decent seal. This would be graph oil, of course. I'd have a pretty good seal against the graph oil. And a pretty good seal against the edge there. It's got a good uh, gap on the corner. That's pretty good. And then I would just trim that down just a little bit, maybe. Wouldn't have to, but it makes it easy so nothing is left over the sticks. There we go. That's going to be my new battery uh, method. I'm going to try this method for the next battery because I think that's good. It'll keep it sealed. And then I can put these plates. There's the uh, kind of an equivalent plate. I, I can put those plates top and bottom and clamp them on and have a nice clamped battery that should stay good for a while. Anyway, so do as I say, not as I do, and have a fantastic day. Bye for now. I've been watching too many videos by Kev. Here I am with one last thing. I noticed that there was a little area right here where the tapes, right there, it was square, where the, the, the two tapes weren't exactly the same length, and so there was a sticky part. So I just took a piece of, uh, I took some scissors and I just angled off. So I end up with more of a, almost a octagonal, but a, a strange one, uh, shape to the, the final thing. By trimming off those four corners, I avoid any part where the tape is sticky.